Hey everyone. So uh, there's lots of connections between the, uh, the function we're working with and the derivative of that function. Uh, in this video, we're gonna start exploring some of those connections and in particular, uh, kind of the graphical relationship between the, uh, the function and its derivative. So in this example, we're given the graph of some function f of x. We don't even know its equation. And we wanna produce a rough sketch of the graph of the derivative of this function. So what should our first step be in graphing the derivative of the function? Well, if we think back to how we graph most of our functions, one of the first things we look for are like zeros or x-intercepts. So let's start by trying to find the zeros or x-intercepts of the derivative of our function from the graph of the function itself. So the first thing we're going to do is find where the derivative of our function is actually equal to zero. And to do that, we have to remember one of our interpretations of the derivative as the slope of a tangent line at a particular point. So to find out where the uh, derivative is equal to zero, we have to think about the graph of the function and the graph of tangent lines throughout our function, and where does the graph of those tangent lines have a slope of zero. So what does it mean for a, uh, a line to have a slope of zero? Uh, if you remember uh, from earlier math classes, having a slope of zero means you have no change in y with some change in x, so no vertical change, that's gonna produce a, a horizontal uh, line. So we're thinking about where would our tangent line be horizontal? That's where the slope of the tangent line would be zero, and therefore where our derivative would be equal to zero. So remember, the tangent line is just a line that goes in the same direction of our curve at the point that it is tangent to. And so we can always go back to kind of that riding a roller coaster type of thing to think about these tangent lines. And so where is our derivative equal to zero? Like we said, that's where our tangent line should be horizontal. And it looks like right about here, our tangent line represented by the pen becomes horizontal as well as up here. So it looks like this little local minimum and local maximum correspond to where our derivative is equal to zero. So I'll be graphing the derivative of our function in uh, yellow. And here we can see the zeros or x-intercepts of our derivative are at these x values corresponding to these local minimums and local maximums. Remember, because there we would have these horizontal tangent lines. All right, so how do we sketch the rest of the graph of the derivative of our function? Well, we just have to figure out how does our derivative behave between these x-intercepts and beyond these x-intercepts. And to do that, we just need to find some sample points and figure out what the value of the derivative would be at at those sample points. So our second step is to find where the derivative, or find values of our derivative between and beyond our zeros, because in between these zeros, the idea is our derivative should always be positive or always should be negative. Uh, it can't switch from positive to negative very easily unless it jumps over a discontinuity or ca crosses through one of our zeros. So because we don't have the equation for our function, we're gonna have to do this all qualita qualitatively, just kind of saying, well, the derivative should be positive here, negative there, more positive here, uh, more negative there, and so on. So just gonna go ahead and pick some random points throughout our interval and sketch uh, tangent lines to help us figure out what the derivative would look like. So if we think about the tangent line at this first point I produced over here, let's see, our tangent line is going down from left to right. So its slope will be some negative value. So that means the value of our derivative at this point should be some negative number. Without knowing more about our function, without having some actual values up here, we don't necessarily know how negative it should be. Maybe it should be really close to zero and negative. Maybe it should be further down the y-axis. This is why we're just producing a sketch of the derivative. All right, so at this point, we said uh, the slope of our tangent line was some negative number. That's how we found the uh, kind of rough value of our derivative. Let's go throughout the rest of these uh, sample points I highlighted, sketch their tangent lines, and see if they should be positive or negative, and how positive and how negative they should be. So what would the tangent line look at this point? Well, it would probably look something like this. And feel free to use the pen to kind of trace along the curve to help you with this if you need to. At that point, it looks like we still have a positive tangent line, but the slope has actually increased a little bit up here at this point. It looks like our tangent line is still having a positive slope, but it's a uh, less positive than it was just a few moments before. 
and now we're leveling off at that zero. Now our function starts to decrease, and we can see that through that negative sloping tangent line. And as we move farther and farther to the right, it looks like our tangent line slope is just getting steeper and steeper, more and more negative. Similarly, as we uh, head off to the left, or really we'd be coming from the left, we can see our tangent lines would be getting steeper and steeper. And going from left to right, they're getting more and more negative. So let's see, here we had a negative slope, a slope of zero, a somewhat positive slope for our tangent line, a little bit more positive slope for our tangent line at that point. And then here is where the slope of our tangent line, it's still positive, but it's a little bit less positive. So on the graph of our derivative, we've got to start decreasing that positive value. Well, then we hit that point where we had a zero on our derivative. So our derivative should be zero. Then after that point, the slope of our tangent lines is negative. So our derivative has to be negative. And we can see as we move farther to the right, the slopes are getting steeper and steeper. And so that means the derivative should be getting more and more negative. So we have a bunch of points plotted here to sketch the graph of our derivative. Now, if we connect all these points, kind of remembering that n behavior we described, make that point bigger. That way I hit it. This is going to be the sketch of f prime of x. Later on in the course, we'll be able to look at the, the graph of the derivative to reproduce or find certain pieces of the graph of the original function and vice versa. Hey everyone, in this example, we are given the function uh, f of x, which is defined as the absolute value of x. We want to sketch the graph of the derivative f prime of x, as well as find an equation for the derivative of our absolute value function. So we can do this like we did in our previous example of first using the graph of the function to uh, sketch the graph of the derivative. So we have to remember what the uh, absolute value function looks like. The absolute value function is basically that kind of V shape. You can think of it as a piecewise function. Remember, the piecewise definition for the absolute value of x is, well, it's equal to negative x if x is less than 0, and positive x if x is greater than or equal to 0. And that just produces that kind of line with a slope of negative 1 for the left half and a line with a slope of positive 1 for the right half. And well, if we remember what is the derivative of a function, it's just the slope of the tangent line. Well. This function really has only two tangent lines, right? A tangent line that describes the entire left half of the graph and a tangent line that would describe the entire right half of the graph, right? What I mean by that is if I were to pick uh, any point on the left half and find its tangent line, they would all be the same. If you go to any point on the right-hand side of our graph and find its tangent line, you get the same line every single time. And so what are the slopes of those tangent lines? Well, Looking at the piecewise definition of our absolute value function, we can see the slopes from the, the lines themselves. The left half has a slope of negative 1, and the right half has a slope of positive 1. So if we're thinking about the derivative of our absolute value function, the derivative for the left half would always be negative 1, and the derivative of the right half would always be positive 1. So something kind of funny happens here at 0. Uh, is the derivative negative 1 or positive 1 at 0? And here we included 0 with the positive x, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the derivative should be positive 1 at 0. It actually turns out at 0, our derivative is undefined. So why is our derivative undefined at x equals 0? Well, it really goes back to remembering the derivative is a limit. Right, depending on which limit definition we use, we could have the limit as x approach a or as h approaches 0. And both of those are technically two-sided limits. And that's really the issue here. If we try to uh, find the derivative as a two-sided limit, we get different values for each side. On the right-hand side, we get a positive number. On the left-hand side, we get a negative number. Those are definitely not in agreement. So we would say that this function is actually not differentiable at 0. All right, so we successfully sketched the graph of the derivative of our absolute value function. We're also tasked with finding the equation of the derivative of the absolute value function. And using our graph, we can quickly construct that equation. It's also going to be a piecewise equation or function. Right, We're going to be 
negative one for the left half, or when x is strictly less than zero, and our derivative is constant positive one for the right half when x is greater than zero. Notice we do not include zero on either of those pieces because like we just mentioned, the derivative is actually not defined at x equals zero. So this is an important example that we want to keep in the back of our minds because it gives us a good example to think about when we want to kind of relate together the ideas of differentiability and continuity. In this example, we can see that our original absolute value function is continuous everywhere, but it is not differentiable everywhere. It fails to be differentiable at x equals zero. And so there's an important relationship between uh, continuity and differentiability. If a function is dif uh, differentiable at a point, then it is guaranteed to be continuous at a point. But if a function is continuous at a point, it is not guaranteed to be differentiable at that point. And that's what we see here in our absolute value example. So let's go ahead and write that theorem down. So our theorem says if f is differentiable at a, then f is also continuous at a, but the converse or the kind of reverse of the statement is not true. If f is continuous at a, that does not guarantee that it is also differentiable at a. That's what we see in this uh, example. So here we can see our absolute value function failed to be differentiable at x equals zero, basically because of this sharp corner and the fact that, well, if we kind of approach the derivative from different sides, we get different values. There is the idea of uh, one-sided uh, derivatives, but we're not really going to dive into those. Um, the point of this example, again, was just to see why our absolute value function failed to be differentiable at zero. And uh, there's going to be some other ways our functions can fail to be differentiable that we'll cover uh, later.